Hi guys and welcome to today's video on congruent figures at a year 8 level. Now interestingly, congruent figures tends to appear through this whole Australian curriculum. Hold on a moment, are you new and you're watching this going, nah I'm not from Australia? No, nor am I, don't worry about it. We are recording videos over here in Australia that are actually worldwide and useful to you. If you're looking to understand about congruent figures, you are in the right place. Hi guys, I'm Darren, otherwise known as Maths Guru, and my channel is here for you to help you get better at mathematics. I cannot wait, and I am stoked for this type of stuff. Now, if you haven't already done so, do me a favor, and over in that corner, there is a button to subscribe, and don't forget to turn on notifications as well. Then you'll get told when new videos are being uploaded. Okie dokie, so congruent figures. Basically, by the end of this lesson, as you will see above, there is an arrow pointing to, you know, what's congruent? What does it mean to be similar? What's the difference between congruence and similar similarity? You know, what a figure is and be able to uh, talk about shapes in terms of points, lines and angles. Now, this is actually recapping from a lot of previous videos. I am sure you can log on to YouTube or MassGuru.com and have a look at all of the videos that are there and proceed this. So we've already dealt with so much stuff with this particular topic. Measurement and geometry, really, really important. It's a foundation for mathematics. It really builds on all sorts of stuff. So we've dealt with angles on a straight line, angles around a point, complementary angles, supplementary angles, and again, all of the things above me that are being highlighted now. Now, if you're over here in Australia, or maybe any other country that allows you to use a summary book to go into an exam, then realistically speaking, you guys should be able to ace this stuff. Why? Well, if you were just to have a couple of sentences of what is a supplementary angle, what is a complementary angle, how many degrees are there around a point? If you get stuck in the exam, you flip open your summary book and then you put, well, it's there, okay? If you, if you, in a country that allows you to use a summary book, I really, really would suggest. We've also looked at things about, you know, how we can take particular figures and rotate them, reflect them, translate them. And we've looked at the idea of Euler's rule, where we have edges, faces, and vertices, and how they are all related for polyhedron. Now, that's all the stuff that's gone before, but you're here for congruence. Well, before we go anywhere, do you know we can actually name shapes? Now, as I say there, we do not name them Bob, Alice, or Muriel. No, that would be silly, really. Uh, I mean, you could name shapes that if you want to, but probably not. So what we tend to do is we use letters to describe or name shapes. Now, obviously, the most simple shape we can probably draw, other than the straight line, is in fact a triangle. So there we go. There is a triangle. Let's call you Bob uh, as well. But we tend to name triangles using letters, and the letters are placed on the vertices. And if you remember what a vertex is, it is nothing more than a corner. So we could put a... B and C there. Now, how do, we uh, how do we label these things? Well, to be honest with you, there is a bit of a convention. On the whole, it doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise. The only time labeling these triangles becomes important is when we are dealing with congruence, and we'll come to that in just a moment. So what I tend to do is I always use the first letter of the alphabet, I go up, and I start and I go clockwise around my shape. So you notice there I went A, B, C. And so, as we say here, our shape, our triangle there, can be described using three letters, A, B, C. Now, we normally in textbooks do them italicized. Obviously, you can't do that. But what you'll notice is we could also call our triangle C, B, A. Now, it doesn't matter that I've gone anti-clockwise there, sorry, that way for the camera, but what we are doing is we're visiting each of those letters in a particular order, okay? So that's one way to do a triangle. Uh, the next obvious shape, I suppose, would be A quadrilateral, so there's A, and then going clockwise, B, C, and D. Again, if you go anti-clockwise, no big deal. Doesn't matter so long as you don't do something bizarre like this. If you did A, B, and then went C and D, sadly that breaks convention for mathematics because once you've started moving in a direction, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, you must, must keep using the letters that way. So A, B, C, and D. And likewise, we could call this shape B, C, D, A. We could call it C, D, A, B. It doesn't matter so long as you are consistent. Obviously, three-dimensional shapes are used as well, and so I suppose the easiest one to deal with at this moment in time would be a cuboid. Now, I'm gonna put dotted lines here just to show that it is, in fact, three-dimensional, and that there is that corner, uh, or that vertex, 
uh, at the bottom of the shape and towards the back of it. So again, how would I label this? Well, the start at the front, A, B, C, and D. So that's my front face done. And then what I do is I'm gonna go E, F, G, and H. Notice what I did in each one of those cases. I moved clockwise around the shape. I started with A in this bottom corner. I put E in that bottom corner and then followed my clockwise rotation of the letters. Okay, so using that particular cuboid, as I say here, we can then describe lines and faces. We already know about vertices. You know, this vertex here would be called B, just B, there we go. So when we have one letter on its own, it's a vertex. What about two letters? What about if I said AB? Well, if we look on our shape for AB, then that's describing a straight line. So AB would be a line in this example, GH would be a line. And we could call it HG if I wanted to, bit weird, but we could have HG. What about faces? Well, a face is a particular sort of side of a shape, if you were. So that shape there has one, two, three, four, five, six faces. So if I wanted to talk about a face, I could use A, B, C, D. That's the front of my face, All right? So that's a face. And what else could we have a face? I could have C, D, H, and G. Now there we go, so C, D, H, G is that one there. Notice once again, I've chosen a corner and then I've gone around it in a particular direction. I didn't go C, D, G, H, because that wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. So having named the shapes using letters, we, I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about angles or angels, lol. Shapes have angles and we can describe angles in a number of ways as well. Now, slightly confusingly, we can use three letters to talk about angle as well. So let's look at this shape here. Is that a triangle? No, because we're missing a section here. So obviously it's describing some sort of an angle. So we can put letters on this again, A, B, and C. Notice once again, I'm choosing a vertex, I'm putting a letter, and then I'm going clockwise or anti-clockwise around things, and I think my fingers just did that the wrong way, to be able to label those letters. So how do we describe this angle here in the middle of it? Well, believe it or not, by using A, B, C. Now, Barry, you've, you've almost, almost got us here because, you know, you like to trick us, but actually, how do we denote that this is an angle? We put a little hat sign above the B, all right? So generally speaking, we put that little hat sign, it's an angle sign, believe it or not, and there we go. That's one way of doing it, but believe it or not, there are two other ways of being able to describe that angle as well. So we could just put angle B. Now again, notice that little sign. It's just nothing more than a little angle sign. So it says angle B. And is there another way? Uh, well, I could try angle A, B, C as well. All right, so lots of different ways of being able to put this. Remember, Matt is gonna try and trick you. So just look for those little angle signs because it means it's an angle. One other way, actually, interestingly, we can go back to the triangle up here and label this is actually by putting a little uh, triangle sign in front of it, all right? So we're gonna come up with an example in a moment that has a little triangle sign. So what is congruence? Now, if you have a summary book, this is the type of thing you would write in your summary book. You would go, congruence means the triangles or the shapes are exactly the same size. That means their lines are the same length and their angles are the same size as well. The triangles are identical, but, how are we going to try and trick you? How does Barry or your maths teacher or me going to try and trick you with this? Well, look at these two triangles here. Would you say they were congruent? Some people out there will go, no, they're not congruent because one of them's been turned. And that's the trick. Shapes can still be turned. They can even be reflected and still be congruent. Remember, for them to be congruent, the angles have to be the same size and the sides have to be the same length. Now, when I taught this to my group, I have to say, when you look at these signs here, these shapes here, I'm not absolutely sure that you could describe those as congruent. Theoretically speaking, looking at them visually, they are the same size. But, bearing in mind mathematics, we don't draw shapes to scale. That could be a trick. Now, generally speaking, because congruence has to have the same side lengths, 
and the same angles. If I look at these two shapes here, the only thing they're actually telling me is the size of the angles. Yes, we have an open circle and an open circle. We have the right angle, the right angle, and we have the closed circle or the colored in circle and the colored in circle. So that's great. We know the angles are the same, but there's nothing on this diagram to say that actually the sides are the same length. Now again, when I took this to my group, I said, well, look, here's a shape. Let's say that that's three centimeters, four centimeters, and five centimeters. And let's call that open circle, right angle, and closed circle. And then I draw another triangle that looks the same. And I write here six, eight, and five. Let me ask you a question. Are those shapes congruent? Probably not. Well, in fact, definitely not because the sides are different lengths. But does that mean that because obviously this triangle here is twice as big as my first triangle, are the angles twice as big? And interestingly, when I did this with my mass group, lots of them went, yeah, of course, yeah, twice as big. And then I went, really? Because if I add up angles in a triangle, it doesn't matter how big the sides are, the angles always add up to 180 degrees. So actually, regardless of the sides, if I've made the triangle twice as big, three times as big, four times as big, those angles there will still be identically sized. So realistically speaking, what I'm saying here is yes, they look congruent, but realistically speaking, I think it would have been nicer if we'd had little uh, lines on the sides just to say that those sides are the same length as well. Because again, maths tries to trick us. Now, having just rubbed this out, I said at the start that we'd look at the idea between similarity and congruence. Similarity is where you take triangles or rectangles or other shapes and you make them twice as big, three times as big, half as big, that's similarity. So similarity is where you take a shape and make it bigger. Congruence is where you take the same shape and just duplicate it somewhere. So how do we describe congruence? We use this wonderful little sign here, which is an equal sign with an extra line on top. So if we were to now assume that these shapes are congruent, and I move this up a little bit, if we wanted to write that they were congruent in a maths exam, then this is exactly what we write here. Triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle F, D, E. Hold on a moment. F, D, E? Why wasn't that D, E, F? We just said a moment ago that angles, uh, that the, the sides could be described except for congruence. When we're trying to describe congruence, when we have vertex A, as our first letter, we have to match the same corner on the congruent shape as that first letter. So because A and F are the same, A starts there and F starts there. Then we work around B becomes D and C becomes E. So again, a bit of a trick there. Make sure when you're dealing with congruence that actually you label the vertices in the same order for both of those triangles. Now you probably turn around and say, well, just by looking at it, that's okay, I can do that, yeah? Sadly not. With congruence, in a year eight, a year nine, and a year 10 level, you have to write statements that support why they're congruent. Now, generally speaking, three statements should be enough. More on that in, a, in another video, but what I'm trying to do here is say, well, not only can we say that yes, they are congruent by looking at them, but I'm gonna tell you why. And the best way to do that is to look at sides, angles, and vertices, and just say, well, there we go. So statement number one, vertex C corresponds to vertex E. Did we say that in my diagram? Was vertex C corresponding? Yes. So I would just write that down. You just almost need to state the obvious. Now, if you're a boy out there, you'd be like, nah, I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna write the statement. You as a maths teacher can sort it out. I'm gonna go, I really wouldn't, because you're gonna lose a shared load of marks. For these three sentences, which aren't particularly difficult, you could gain up to four marks in an exam. So there's one statement, let's come up with another statement. Let's talk about a side, all right? So side AB corresponds to side FD. So again, AB and FD, notice the order. I didn't go AB, DF, I went AB, FD, because I'm going from A to B, and then keeping the congruence the same, F to D. So we've dealt with the vertex, we've dealt with the side, let's throw in an angle. So as you can see here, Angle B corresponds to angle D. So there's angle B corresponds to angle D. We know that because that little colored in symbol. And ladies and gentlemen, four marks for effectively stating the obvious. So we need this congruent statement here to say, yes, they are congruent. And three things, deal with an angle, a side, and a vertex. 
and fingers crossed you should ace this stuff. There's not really much more I can talk about with this one, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a textbook out there, for example, the Cambridge textbook, then you just dive in. The questions are awesome and they will just teach you this stuff. Otherwise, I'm calling it a day. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, can you do me the greatest of honor and subscribing by clicking at that circular doohickey over there. And if you can tell your mates, greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Mass Guru, out.